How we doing, everybody? It's your boy Raf here from Two Dudes Talk Music, and I woke up this morning and Metallica dropped a new fucking song. So we're gonna do a reaction. Uh, I had to resist the temptation to click on it immediately. I wanted to come on here and do a reaction for you guys. This one's called "Screaming Suicide." It's another uh, song off the upcoming album Seventy Two Seasons. Of course, the first song they released from that was Lux Eterna. Uh, so this is a new song, new video, all that good stuff. Uh, you know, I've been a life Metallica fan for fucking two thirds of my life. You know, Metallica Club t-shirt and shit on today for this. So, uh, yeah, a uh, new song called Greaming Suicide. It looks like it's a bit longer than the last one. So yeah, we're just going to go through it. Uh, going to have a little, little listen reaction to it and yeah, we'll see how we go. Uh, without further ado, let's get into it. Metallica Screaming Suicide. Interesting, I like this stuff. Right off the bat, the start of this song has a very much, uh, very almost load reload feel, I think, about it, uh, which is interesting. I'm keen to see where the rest of the song goes, but I just thought I'd, yeah. Mm, okay, we'll see how this turns out. Yeah, again, I mean, I, I noted this when I watched uh, Lux Eterna and I was listening to that. It's very, like, Garage Inc. era kind of production for this album. Like, not so much in the songwriting necessarily, because obviously they didn't write any of the Garage songs on Garage Inc., but the way the production was done for that album, this, is, this new album, it definitely seems like it's going to be in that same vein. So, yeah. Let's keep going, but that was just really interesting. It's definitely solidified for me that that's the, the sound of this album is going to be very reminiscent of that. Sinister transition there. I just, I gotta say as well, like, we see James's weight fluctuate a fair bit. Like, you see some photos and he looks quite chubby. Other photos he seems to have lost. He's looking really, really good here. Like, he definitely seems like he's slimmed down a bit. So, I hope for his sake that his health is, is still well. Obviously, we know he had uh, a few years ago, had to go back into rehab uh, again, uh, which, you know, it's a struggle for anybody. And if you are struggling with addiction, I definitely recommend that you seek help with it. But, uh, I mean, he looks like he's doing pretty well. He looks like he's fairly healthy. So, good for him. Um, I'm also, with this song, just more about the song there, the the change to that very kind of minor section right at the at the end of, I think, the verse or the, the chorus. Of, might even be the pre-chorus section, but there's a section before where it slipped into like a very minor sounding section which added, took it very into like sinister 
uh, after that that verse. So I'm probably going to come around again, but I am very curious about the how where the rest of the song's going with that too. That bit, that bit changes to the a section that's very much in a minor uh, uh, interval is what I'm what I'm going for there. So that's really really I like that transition. I like that change to the more sinister sound there just to accentuate that. Hang on, that was really cool. I want to go back and watch that again. The transition from slow-mo into normal speed, that was fucking cool. That, oh, that was nice. Good, good. I dig that. One of the, I think one of the problems with some of Metallica's, you know, more recent stuff is some of those solos just, they kind of went too long. Kirk's trying to do all this stuff to keep him interesting, but I feel like the short, sharp solos is really where he excels these days. Obviously, back in the day, it was a little bit different when you look at, you know, some of the stuff on Justice and whatever. Some of the solos are going to be longer or they're a bit more uh, full on. But I think these days, especially, he's if it's a short sharp solo and he doesn't have to make it last a certain amount of time it just naturally goes uh you know naturally feels like the right length there uh, that absolutely was really really good i dig that and obviously we're going into a bridge section now um interesting choice i think although i guess with the subject matter for this film clip going black and white adds an air of seriousness to it after the uh you know more more bright and you know light filled lux eterna video this is dev you know it's black and white there's like snow there's a whole lots of um flashing like blurring images and stuff so i feel like that's uh aesthetically a good the, the right visual to go with the subject matter so another solo okay that's cool All right, hang on, hang on, hang on. I want to go back a second. I want to look at this. So that was two guitar solos in the one. So you had solo, bridge, solo. Okay, interesting choice. I want to go back and just listen to that first solo again all the way through and see the comparison between the two. Is it about here? Oh, not quite far enough.
good transition back into that pre-chorus. Okay. All right, all right. So, straight up, cool song. I dig it. I feel like I prefer Lux Eterna over that. That seems like they tried to make it go on a bit longer. They might have, I feel like they maybe padded that one a little bit. Just me. Just my opinion. I obviously wasn't there for the writing process, so I don't know. But to me, that feels like it's been padded a little bit. Uh, good song, though. I dig the riffs there. It's weird, you know. The parts of this song in terms of the structure of them and the sound, the, the, what was being played definitely gave me uh, like load and reload era vibes, but the production was very much uh, Garage Inc. And I know Garage Inc. came right after that. So it's almost to me, I'm getting it like a sense of the last, the more modern Metallica era stuff being almost cyclical, right? So they, <sighs> When they released uh, Death Magnetic and and Hardwired, that gave the sense of almost trying to go back to that Master of Puppets, Ride the Lightning, Justice for All era type style of songs. And this is, you know, going to the more mid-90s era stuff. I'm, so I'm wondering, it's, it's just interesting to me that it feels like they've done a couple more albums that have that old 80s songwriting energy to them in terms of the more thrashy type stuff and this feels yeah more like they're moving into that 90s era metallica again which is really interesting uh but still mixing in some of the thrashier elements in terms of the way the guitar solos and, and things like that are set up um odd structural choices like having those two guitar solos around a middle eight section was was interesting i'm not sure uh what led to that decision there but I think the solos, if they were together, if they just tried to do one solo section of that length, I feel like it would have just sounded like it was going on too long. But having that break in the middle definitely helped it, I think. Uh, yeah, look, there you go. Metallica, Screaming Suicide. That is from the 72 Seasons album, which is coming up for release in April of this year. So I'm pretty excited about that. And yeah, look, let me know what you thought down in the comments. Uh, like, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Uh, check us out. We do have uh, streaming interviews. If you're not if you're not familiar, the Two Dudes Talk Music, we are a music podcast. Uh, we do live streams. We have people on do interviews and stuff. We generally stream those live on Twitch on Thursday nights, uh, Australia time. But uh, you can catch the, you know, if you can't catch it live, you can catch them on YouTube there. Um, or if you prefer to get them in, audio podcast form we are also on audio podcast form already a podcast from so yeah thank you very much for watching let me know your thoughts on this new song down in the comments and we will catch you guys later see ya